One of my favorite Linux distributions is Debian. It is a fantastic GNU slash Linux distribution. It's been around forever. It's one of the oldest actively maintained Linux distributions. It got its start in late 1993, so it's been around for a long time. And Debian is also kind of like the grandfather distribution because so many other distributions base off of Debian because it has a fantastic repository of software, a huge repository of software where it's hard to to find a piece of software that's not in the Debian repos. And that's one of the reasons people run Debian. The other reason people typically run Debian is because of how rock solid stable the main Debian edition is. As a matter of fact, the, the real product that they push is actually Debian stable. Even though they have three different branches, they have stable, testing, and unstable, you're going to have a hard time going to the Debian website and finding an ISO for Debian testing or Debian unstable. The reason you're going to have a hard time finding those ISOs, those ISOs don't exist. Debian actually doesn't want people running the testing and unstable branches because those are rolling release branches and obviously things can break when you run a rolling release distribution. But I, I like living on the edge, right? I like running rolling release distributions like Arch Linux and Arch based uh, distributions. That's kind of what I've lived on here in the last couple of years. So if I was going to install Debian on any of my personal machines, I probably would use the unstable branch. And today I'm going to show you guys how to get Debian unstable installed. So let me switch over to my desktop and let me get to my web browser. Now the Debian website is very confusing. They have a, a lot of different ISOs on their website, but it's really weird how you have to navigate through a ton of different pages to grab an ISO. But what you guys want to do, if you want to install Debian Unstable, go to the Debian Unstable page in the Debian Wiki. I will link to this in the show description. And if you scroll down, you have installation and they tell you three different ways you can install Debian. The recommended way is to install Debian stable and then change the apt sources so they're pointing to the unstable repositories and then do a full system upgrade so you update all the stable packages to the unstable packages. That's the recommended way. I don't like doing it that way because why install Debian stable and then do a massive update to install all the unstable packages? Why not just install the unstable packages directly? And that's what I'm going to do. And it's this section here. Use the unstable mini.iso image. So what you want to do is you want to grab the mini ISO from the Debian mirrors. And it's listed under Debian slash dist slash unstable slash main slash installer slash current slash images slash netboot. That is a very, very long path I would have to navigate here <laughs> uh, through this. First, I would choose a country. I am in the U.S., so I'd go to the U.S. mirrors here, and then I'm going to go through dist. Uh, I, I forget the full path. <laughs> dist. Uh, unstable. Okay, we keep going down to unstable. And then main. Looks like I've been there before. Installer-amd64, because I'm on a 64-bit system and then current, and then images, and then netboot, and then mini.iso. That is the image that you want to download. Now, my problem with this mini.iso is I'm looking at the date. And the last time that this was released was the 6th of June, and right now it is July 30th. That's two months old, that mini.iso, and because we're installing a rolling release, I don't like doing a two-month-old ISO, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to their daily images. So if you go to d-i.debian.org for daily images, go to daily images and follow the same kind of path. I'm going to do AMD64, daily, netboot, and here is mini.iso, and that's the one I'm going to grab. And I'm going to go ahead and install Debian inside a virtual machine. So what you want to do when you first boot into the mini.iso, instead of choosing install, don't choose install. Because if you just choose install, you're going to get the standard Debian installer that installs Debian stable because that's what they expect most people to actually want. But you want to go to advanced options and go to expert install. And this is going to launch a Incurses installer, but don't worry that it's an Incurses installer. It's very, very easy to navigate this installer. So the very first thing, choose language, just hit enter. And by default, it selects English. That's correct for me. If you needed to change the language, of course, you would navigate through the list and then hit enter on your language. But I'm just going to hit enter. 
and choose country or territory. United States is already selected, so I'm going to hit enter. Country to base default locale settings. My locale should be United States as well. And do we want to add any additional locales? I'm okay with just the one locale. So I'm going to tab to get to the continue box over here. Let me move my head out of the way. So you have continue here. And then we just go to the next part of the installation. So the next step, access software for a blind person using a braille display. I won't have any uh, visually impaired people using this virtual machine, so I'm actually gonna skip that step. I'm just gonna arrow down to the next thing here, which is configure the keyboard. I'm just gonna hit enter. Uh, key maps, American English is the default. That's correct for me, so I'm just gonna hit enter. Detect network hardware, I'm gonna hit enter. And do we want to install a USB storage module that's ticked on by default? I would just leave that ticked on. Then I would hit tab to get to continue and hit enter. The next step is configure the network. Just hit enter and it asks you, do you want to have Debian auto configure networking? Absolutely. So just hit enter. And then it's going to say waiting time for link detection. The default is three. Just leave it as three tab to get to the continue button and hit enter. This will take just a few seconds to configure the networking. Next, it asks you to enter a host name. So this is the host name of the computer. By default, it's chosen Debian. I'm just going to leave it as Debian. And then we need to enter a domain name. Now, obviously, we only need really a domain name if this is going to be like a web server. I'm just going to hit tab to get to continue, and I'll just leave the domain name blank. Now, choose a mirror of the Debian archive. So let me hit enter. This is, of course, syncing uh, some, some mirrors so we can actually download software. How do we want to get this? Do we want to do it over HTTP, HTTPS, or FTP? The default is HTTP, and they say it's less prone to problems, such as uh, if you had a firewall installed or something. So I'm just going to leave it as HTTP. So I'm going to hit enter and then it asks what country we're in. I'm in the United States. So it, it'll show us mirrors inside the United States. By default, deb.debian.org is selected for us. I'm OK with that. I'm just going to hit enter. Uh, HTTP proxies. I'm not using a proxy, so I'm just going to tab to get to continue and hit enter. Then it says Debian comes in several flavors. So we have stable, testing, and unstable. I'm going to arrow down to the SID branch, which is the unstable branch, and hit enter. Then download installer components. I'm just going to hit enter on this. And then it gives us a bunch of extra installer-related stuff that we could add if we needed it. But honestly, most people are never going to need any of this stuff. This is just extra installer components to use during the installation process if you needed to. For example, there's modules for uh, SSH, I guess if you were installing Debian over SSH and things like that. I'm just going to hit tab to get to the continue button to move forward here. And now we get back to the menu and this time the menu has more things in it because now we have the option of setting up users and passwords and things like this. So let's go ahead and set up the user and password. It asks us, do we want to enable shadow passwords? Yes is recommended. So I will choose yes. Do we want a root user and do we want to allow the root user to actually be able to log in? That's OK for me. So I'm just going to hit yes. And now we need to create a root password for the root user. So let's create a strong and complicated password for the root user and then tab over to continue. Then re-enter that strong and complicated root password and hit continue. Now it asks us, do you want to create a normal user? Because you don't want just the root user because it's dangerous to do everything as root. You need a normal user. So definitely create one. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to call my uh, new user, my normal user, DT, and then I'll tab over to continue. The username for the account is DT, and then we need to create a strong and complicated password for the DT user. And then tab over, and then re-enter the password and tab over, and then configure the clock. Just hit enter, set the clock using NTP, that is okay, and it's asking about the NTP server, just use the default, and then select the time zone. I'm in the central time zone in the US, so I will hit enter on central. Detect disk, just hit enter, and it should detect your physical disk in your machine. For me, I'm using a virtual machine, and there is one virtual disk in this virtual machine. Then it asked about partitioning the disk, so hit enter on that. 
And now we get the standard partitioning screen that you guys have probably seen and things like the Ubiquiti installer, the Calamari's installer. What do you want to do with your partitions? Do you want the automatic partitioning, which is the first option, use the entire disk? That's what I'm going to go with. But if you wanted to, you could go down here to manual partitioning and do it manually yourself. I'm just going to let Debian do its thing. So we're going to do uh, the entire disk and it's going to take up the entire 20 gig hard drive, virtual hard drive in this virtual machine. I'm going to hit enter on that. Then it asks us, do we want to create a separate home partition? In this virtual machine, that would be unused space that would cause me some problems. So I'm actually not going to separate my home partition. I'm just going to do all files in one partition. And then we get an overview of the partition scheme. And finally, just hit enter on finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And then it asks for confirmation one more time. Tab over to yes and hit enter. And then install the base system. Hit enter. This may take a few minutes. And then we get to the next screen, which asks about the kernel. What kernel do you want to install? By default, it's chosen the standard generic kernel here. There is also the RT kernel. That's the real-time kernel. There's some other stuff here. But I'm just going to go with the standard generic kernel. So I'm just going to hit enter. Now it's asking about drivers to include in the init RD. It's selected generic, which includes all available drivers. And of course, that's for safety purposes, right? That covers everybody. Just give all the drivers, right? So that's the one I would go with. You could also do targeted where it kind of searches your machine and figures out the exact drivers you need. I'm just going to do generic here. And the base system finished installing. Now the next thing is to configure the package manager. And then it asks us, do we want to use non-free software? So this will enable the non-free repositories inside Debian because by default, Debian is strictly free software. Now you want to enable the non-free software so that way you can get your proprietary drivers if you need them. And most hardware is going to need some proprietary drivers. Your laptops, many of them have Wi-Fi chips that must have a proprietary Wi-Fi driver for them to work. And then of course, NVIDIA users typically are going to want to use the proprietary NVIDIA drivers for their graphics cards. So I strongly advise you to turn on non-free software unless for you know for sure that your hardware works with strictly free software. Then it's asking about the default source repositories, and this allows you to be able to run the command apt-get source. Make sure that command works. Do you want to enable the source repositories in apt by default? Yes is selected. I'm just going to go with that. Now it's configuring the apt package manager, the standard package manager in Debian. Now it's asking about select and install software. So let's hit enter on that. First, it's asking us, do we want to set up automatic updates? That way we never have to worry about updating the machine. It'll do it automatically. I don't like doing automatic updates. I would rather do it myself. So I'm going to do no automatic updates. If you want automatic updates, obviously you would choose the other option. Then it's asking about PopCon. PopCon is the popularity contest program that's built into Debian. It sends information back to Debian. So if you choose to participate in this, what it does, it's going to send information about your machine back to Debian so they can make a better distribution. Typically on real machines, I would choose yes for this. I don't mind giving them a little information in this VM though. I'm just going to choose no. And now we get to the screen where we can choose our desktop environment. By default, it's chosen the standard Debian desktop environment, which is typically GNOME. I'm going to tick these off though, because I'm going to install a different one. I'm going to install KDE Plasma. Then I'm going to tab down to continue and hit enter. And KDE Plasma has a lot of packages that have to install. Thankfully, Debian is a binary distribution rather than a source-based distribution. So this should only take just a few minutes. And it's finished installing Plasma. The next thing is to install the Grub bootloader. So I'm just going to hit enter on that. And it should do this automatically. There's nothing for us to do. We don't have to edit any kind of config files or anything. The, the Debian incurses installer is actually very, very easy. Now it's asking us where should we install the Grub bootloader, which device? And it's asking, do you want to install it to the primary drive? That's okay if this is a single operating system computer. So I'm just going to hit yes. Now it's asking for the device. It's slash dev slash VDA in my case. Now it's asking, do we want to force the Grub installation to the EFI removable media path? So I'm actually going to decline that. Now it's asking, do we want to finish the installation? And absolutely. So this should do some last minute things such as setting the clock. And then 
Hopefully we're getting close to the reboot. Yes. And now it's saying finish the installation, hit continue, and it should reboot the machine for us. And it reboots just fine. We get a grub menu. So let's go ahead and boot into our freshly installed Debian Unstable. All right. And we get the login manager. So let's go ahead and I'm going to click the screen here, the drop down, just to make sure Plasma is the only desktop environment installed. And it is. That's the only one I selected during the installation. Let's go ahead and log in. All right, and we log in to a very plain vanilla looking uh, Plasma desktop environment. Although Plasma is very, very attractive out of the box. I am going to go ahead and change the screen resolution to 1920 by 1080. That way that is set every time I open this VM from here on out because I may keep this VM around for a little bit. And that is really all there is to getting up and running with Debian Unstable. I'm just going to go to the Applications menu just very briefly to see what is installed by default here in the Plasma Edition. Looks like it did install a pretty good suite of software, including GIMP. So it's not all just the KDE applications, because GIMP, of course, is a GTK application. So there is uh, actually a little bit of stuff installed here if I go back to Internet. Let's see, what, does it install a browser for us? Yes, it installed Firefox for us. And under Multimedia, we have Dragon Player and K3B, the disk burner. Do we have an Office Suite? LibreOffice was also installed by default for us. So the Debian KDE desktop actually does include a pretty good bit of software. So that's nice. So one thing I do want to show you guys is let me go ahead and open up a terminal. So in KDE, the terminal is called console with a K. So I'm going to open up console, and I'm going to zoom way in so you guys can see this. And I'm going to run this command, sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade. This command is the standard command you run in Debian and all Debian-based distributions to update all your software. So this works in Ubuntu, Linux Mint, MX, all Debian-based distributions. It asks for the sudo password, so let me type DT's password. And DT is not in the sudoers file, meaning he does not have sudo privileges. So this is how Debian differs from Ubuntu and Mint and a lot of the other Debian-based distributions you've probably used. Is your normal user can't do anything with sudo until you add him to the sudoers file. So let's do this. So let's SU over to the root user because we need root privileges here. And then as root, open in your favorite text editor. It can be nano, it can be vim, um, but whatever text editor you want to use, open slash etsy slash uh, sudoers. And then you have this file here, and I'm going to go down to this line here, root, and then all equals all, colon all, all. What I'm going to do here in Vim is I'm just going to copy that line. I'm going to do yy to copy and then p to paste, and it's going to complain. Uh, I'm changing a read-only file. That's fine. Then I'm going to do cw for change word, and I'm going to do dt. And then I also need to change some of this because I don't need the colon all. So I'm going to delete that and hit escape. And now if I do a colon WQ to write and quit out of Vim, it's going to complain that it is a read only file. So I need to do colon WQ exclamation point to override that. And now let me SU to the DT user. And now, if I up arrow back to sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade, it's going to ask for a sudo password. Let me hit enter. And there you go. It's updating the system. There shouldn't be anything to update because we just did a fresh internet install. So all the packages should be absolutely up to date. But now we know that DT has sudo privileges. And close out that. So that was a very quick installation process, right? It's very easy to install Debian. And if you want to move to Debian testing, or in my case, Debian Unstable, just grab that mini ISO. I'm going to give you a link in the show description because it is very confusing how to find that mini ISO from Debian's website because it's just like a labyrinth of ISOs that you've got to navigate from their site. Now, should you be running Debian unstable? Because obviously the Debian guys would say you probably need to run the stable version of Debian. Well, it depends on use case. If you're if you need the bleeding edge software, you need the latest and greatest, especially if you maybe you're a developer and you need the latest and greatest libraries for whatever programming languages you work in and things like that, then being on a rolling release distribution makes a lot more sense than being on a stable distribution. For what I do, because I play with so much software, I'm always trying out new software. You know, I hear about this new piece of software and I want to try it out. 
it's not going to be available in Debian stable, right? It's the, that piece of software that's brand new hasn't made it into Debian stable yet, but it will be in Debian unstable. And that's why I run rolling release distributions. Now, before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of this episode. Epsy, Gabe, James, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Akami, Allen, Chuck, Kurt, David, Dylan, Gregory, Heiko, Erjan, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Raver, Scott, Steven, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This episode about how to install Debian Unstable would not have been possible. The show's brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. These names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to support me, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. I love unstable distributions. Keeps you on your toes.